Paul, important when you're involved in something like that to come away with something to show for it? Well, without a doubt. I mean, if you, if you can't win it, you don't lose it. Um, I'm sure as a, as a supporter, it was a fantastic game of football to watch. Um, I knew it was going to be tough today. No, no, that's, that looks like I've got a crystal ball. I fully expected it to be a tough game today. Um, I think the, and I, and I did say this on Thursday, that I, I, I didn't really look anything into the fact that Rochdale were bottom of the league because I think they've got some really good players. I think they're a good side. I think Jim's a good manager. So I expected there to be um, not so much a backlash, but a reaction from them. And I think we got that. I don't think we did... Um, all of the things right that we wanted to do because in this league I think it's about competing um, I think it's about first balls second balls <laughs> and sadly on too many too, too many of their goals uh, we didn't win first contacts we didn't win second balls and um, I thought um, I thought the run from Rodney for the second goal was a fantastic run and a really good ball that had slipped through for him first goal's a little bit unfortunate it took a deflection um, just too many mistakes from us, and that's what's the big disappointing thing out of it. Um, but what I would say, I think we've shown tremendous character there today. Um, to be 3-1 down and to, and to stay on the front foot and keep going. We had a spell in that second half where we lost our way. Um, I don't mind saying that, we did lose our way. Um, we got bullied a little bit by Quigley. Um, we didn't pick up those second balls, we were giving the ball away cheap. Um, but I thought we rode it, rode it and we got through it. Um, in the end, I've got to say, I'm delighted that we've taken a point out of it. It's not what I wanted at the start, but we have to just dust, our, dust ourselves down and move on. I know this is easy to say, but this time last year, we wouldn't have got a point out of a game like that. But it's not, actually, it's a fact that, that so something has changed. Mm. And, and we didn't score three goals last year either. So there are positives from it and I think the big thing we have to take out of today is the character and the personality that the players showed. Um, I'm quite sure that a lot of the fans will go home disappointed that we haven't won the game um, because they look at the league table and they see Rochdale at the bottom but as I say I think Rochdale are a good team, I think they've got good players, I think the wide players um, cause problems, I thought Quigley, I mean if it was Quigley or Henderson they're, they're a threat up front and um, we just didn't deal with it as well as we would have liked to today. Um, but it's a point and we move on. Just a little bit more on that. Those two goals that got them the 3-1 lead at the start of the second half, both occasions we're pressing forward and caught at the back because of that. Yeah, we, as I said, we, we were front foot and we wanted to be front foot because we're at home, we want to entertain. Um, and we'd, we'd done ourselves with it, unfortunately. Um, and sometimes you have, to, you have to say it was a... The second goal in particular I thought was a really good run, a great ball, good run, good finish. Um, the third goal, we gave the ball away cheap, um, two players looking at each other wondering who's going to take it out on the left hand side. We had a great recovery and got ourselves back in but then we allowed the ball back into the box, we allowed Quigley to get on the turn and um, you know he's been scoring goals like that for many many years and we, we should have dealt with it better, we should have stopped it at source. Um, as I say, we made a good recovery and got ourselves back in, but then we didn't deal with it very well. So, yeah, three goals are disappointing. Um, I think Christian Dennis has shown again what he's all about with his goal. Great delivery with Mox from set plays and, and Hunt gets the goal and the other one with uh, with Mel's in the first half. So we've got good set play. We could have had another one. Um, thought, I don't know if it was the goalkeeper who made a brilliant save when Melish looked like he was going to put another one in. So there were a lot of good things, but there's also... Um, a lot of things that we need to keep working on, but listen, I, I've said this for a long time, this isn't going to change overnight. We are not the finished article, and um, today's maybe a, maybe a sign where we are, and, and that we have to keep working at it, and we've got to just try and stay calm and stay positive um, and keep building, and hopefully we get better through time. On that, that message of keep working through that opening half hour, we had to grind our way into the game, not quite as free-flowing as you want it to be, but they kept going. Yeah, we did. Um, I mean, we caused our own problems because we kept giving the ball away. Um, I think we, we keep in training, we talk about getting six passes to try and get control of the game. Um, once you get four and five and six passes, the opposition sort of stopped to chase a little bit and we just didn't do it. Um, we had, a, I think, probably after about 25, 30 minutes, we started to calm down and we were a little bit better in possession then. But my big thing that I've been saying all week and, and the rest of the staff, we're trying to get them to understand the importance of doing the basic things properly. 
of passing the ball properly, taking care, not just dumping it on each other, making sure we have care about the way we pass the ball to each other. Um, and sadly, in the first half, we didn't do that. We had a spell in the second half where we didn't do it as well. Um, but then we kept going. We kept. We were a bit more positive when we changed the shape, um, and we managed to get ourselves a point out of it. I haven't seen it back yet, but have you been doing that in training with Mellish? What a finish! <laughs> um, I certainly haven't been demonstrating it. That's for sure. Um, now Mel's is a. He's one of them players who you've no idea what he's going to do next. I mean, he probably hadn't got a clue what he was doing either, but we'll take goals. We'll take goals from all over. I'm delighted he's got a goal. Pleased with Deno. Great for Hunts to get a goal as well with a great delivery. And he, and he reads the flight of the ball well and got a flick on it. So, some positives. I, 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 I'm reluctant to say lots of positives, but I think there are some positives that we have to just keep building on. Yeah, going to touch on it again. You've mentioned this with the set pieces, but the importance of it. The two two of our goals have come from really good set piece situations. If you can be right from set plays in this league, uh, well, no, sorry, that sounds disrespectful. In any league, if you can be good at set plays, defending them, and attacking them, you've got a hell of a chance. You know, there's a hell of a lot of goals are scored from set plays in every level of football. We've got people who can deliver it. In it was Mox today. Sometimes it's Dev. Sometimes it's uh, Jordan Gibson. Sometimes it's Callum Guy. We have good deliverers. My thing I keep saying is you have to have a desire to score as well. You've got to want to, and, and Hunt certainly does that. Six for Deno, he keeps getting in those areas. Yeah, it's a nasty habit, isn't it? And long may it continue. Um, he is a natural goal scorer, just like they will talk about Quigley and Henderson being goal scorers. That's what Deno does for us. We have to get our other forward players wanting to do that as well, realising the importance of getting goals. Um, and if we can just get them convinced about that, then, we, then we'll score more. Something felt right about Hunts getting a goal in front of the Warwick. Yeah, I, listen, I don't care about what happened however many hundred years ago. It, it's all in the past. You know, I know that people weren't very happy when I left the football club, but it's changed. So, football's a really fickle game, and uh, Hunts has shown in the way he's come into the club and the way he's gone about his business that he wants to be here. He's trying to do the right things. Once he gets fully fit, he will be a really good addition to our football club. He showed that today defensively, didn't he? He's winning all those headers and he's a really physical presence. Yeah. But is he OK when he went off? There? Yeah, he just got cramp. Um, he's still working his way to fitness. and um, That's the problem. I mean, the concern today was Ryan Edmondson. He twisted his ankle very, very early into the game and um, had to come off. Um, he wasn't subbed because of the mistake. He just couldn't move his feet properly. Um, he kept telling me he was OK, but he wasn't running OK. So I maybe have to hold my hands up and say that I should have got him off earlier, not put him into that situation. But he kept saying he was fine. I want it. Sometimes when you when you have an ankle twist, it's really painful for a few minutes, and then you can get through it. And then tomorrow it swells up. But he was too he was in too much pain, and um, he's gone away in a boot today. And we'll see how he is on Monday. Was it part of that challenge that led to the goal where it, it, it really did do no, the ankle? No, it happened earlier. Um, it was when he chased their centre-back into the corner, he gave a stupid free kick away, shoved the player in the back, and as the, the centre-back went down, he just did a bit of a scissors on his ankle and twisted it. Um, the, their centre-back did a scissors on his ankle, twisted his ankle and uh, caused him a bit of a problem. And we, we knew about it and I kept asking him and he said, no, I'm fine, it'll run off. Um, but we got to a point where it was too much. And we just it doesn't sound great for him. He must be so frustrated with what he's just been through with the hip. Yeah, he was frustrated when he walked off. I haven't spoken to him after the game. Sometimes these sort of things, you better just leave him and let the dust settle and I'll probably speak to him tomorrow or Monday and see how he is. Um, I thought when Amari came on, he made an impact, tired towards the end of the game. Um, but um, this is where the squad comes into play and hopefully we've, we've got a good enough squad that can deal with these things. Talk about impacts, Dev. What a, a little cameo appearance from him today. Yeah, brilliant. I thought he did well the other night as well, so I wanted to get him on. Um, at some point, I chose to go with Jaden in there because of his legs to be able to go and get up and down the pitch. Um, and then I just felt it needed a bit of a change. Um, so Dev played a great ball out wide. Jordan Gibson does what he does and we got the goal from it. Um, so hopefully we, do, we can keep Dev involved and, uh, and and keep having an impact from him. That's one from me, boss Callum Guy. What's the, the news on him? Yeah, he, uh, he just tweaked his groin in training on Tuesday morning. Um, literally the last thing of the session, he, he struck a ball and he just felt it. Um, I'm told it's a grade one strain, which is a week to ten days. So we fully expect him um, to be joining in training maybe at the end of next week and back in for the, the next the next game next Saturday. Um, so we're just going to wait and see how he is. Thanks for your time.